Number 81, the volume occupied by 0.5 mole of propane at this temperature and pressure is best expressed by what? So we can kind of see looking at the choices and given the setup that we're gonna be using PV equals NRT here. And I'm gonna be solving for volume, so I'm just gonna rewrite that as V is equal to NRT over P. And so now I'll just plug in my values. So I've got 0.5 moles, R 0.082, T, remember you've got to add your temperature of 27 to 273 because you want to always have your temperatures in Kelvin when you're doing gas, well, really anything, any calculation. So we get 300 Kelvin for that. So that's my T. And then my pressure is two. And one thing just to double check before you pick an answer, let's just verify that your units are good. Notice R has units of liter, atmosphere, mole, Kelvin, and that's what I have for all of these. I've got my moles, I've got my Kelvin, I've got my atmospheres, and I'm gonna get liters. So everything is good with my units. So I look for the choice that matches this, and it looks like it would be B, I think, right? Yeah, so we'd get B. What is the equilibrium expression for this guy? So it's products over the reactants. So we're gonna get our Kc. It's gonna be the concentration of our NH3. And remember that's squared because of this coefficient. And then I'm gonna have N2 on the bottom. And then I'm gonna have H2 cubed. And so notice these are all gases, so they're all included. If they were any AQs, I would include those. There are no solids and liquids, but remember if there were any solids and liquids, those would not be incorporated into my uh, expression. So now I look at the choices and it looks like the only one that works is D. And so that's it. In qualitative analysis, the separation of Ag plus from Cu2 plus by the addition of HCl depends on the fact that, well, remember that Ag plus plus Cl minus yields an insoluble solid, yields a precipitate, AgCl. And so when you add that HCl to this mixture of Ag plus and Cu, your AgCl is gonna precipitate. And then in this case, the copper is not. Copper chloride is soluble. So Ag plus forms an insoluble chloride and Cu2 plus does not. That is true, so 83 is B. The others, A has it flipped around, not right. Uh, C. It's copper 2 plus does not form a complex with HCl, so that's not true. Cu reacts with HCl and Ag does not. Well, there is no Cu or Ag. There's Cu 2 plus and Ag plus. And if anything, Ag is the one that reacts with Cl, specifically Ag plus. Ag plus is not gonna be oxidized. If anything, it would be reduced because it's already positive, but obviously it's not being reduced or oxidized here. So uh, we get rid of E because this Ag is still you know Ag plus as a, oxidation number and the Cl is still Cl minus. There's no redox going on here. It's just a precipitation. And so the one that is true is B. Now for 84, this gets into electrolysis, which you don't really see that much. You should know the basic idea of electrolysis that you have to put energy into the uh, system in order to drive the reaction. It's not something that happens spontaneously. Beyond that, I don't think you really need to know much, so we're gonna run through this one quickly. In fact, this one can be answered basically after knowing, uh, just by knowing some stuff about redox. So for B, oxidation does occur at the anode in any kind of electrolysis reaction or, elect or electrochemical reaction because, remember this little mnemonic, N-ox, anode oxidation, that is true. And if you look at the others, they're not going to be true. So you're actually going to put the object to be plated at the cathode in these types of plating situations. Sulfate ions are going to migrate towards the anode. And the way we know that, sulfate ions, that's SO4 2 minus. And the name for a negative ion, an anion, right, that's a negative ion, comes from the fact that these migrate to the anode, anode, anion. That's not a coincidence, that's where the name anion comes from, or at least what's related to. So that is false, it's the opposite. Sulfate will migrate towards the anode. Concentration of the copper sulfate solution increases as electrolysis proceeds? No, because this copper, the Cu2 uh, plus or one plus, whichever one it is, that is what's gonna go attached to the object to be plated to form, what would that go? That disappeared, uh, to form the plating, right? So once you uh, start the process, this, these copper ions are going to 
uh, attach to this metal, and so you're actually going to decrease the concentration of Cu2+. And similarly, the copper electrode will therefore decrease in mass because it's going to be dissolving um, into, into solution, basically. Um, long story short, all these are opposite. B is the answer. I wouldn't worry too much about this one because you're not really going to see much about electrolysis on, on modern tests. Which of the following contains the greatest number of atoms? Well, one mole of CO2, that's 6 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Avogadro's number. There are 3 atoms per molecule, so this is 18 times 10 to the 23 atoms. It's quite a lot. So A is looking, you know, reasonable. Now with B, B is better than A because you've got, again, one mole, but you've got four atoms per mole. So this would be 24 times 10 to the 23 atoms. So B beats out A, we'll get rid of A. One molecule of glucose, no way, that's only gonna have 24 atoms, not even close to B. One gram of helium, this is gonna be 0.25 moles because one divided by four gives you 0.25 moles and that's gonna be falling short of 24 times 10 to the 23 atoms because you would multiply this by 6 times 10 to the 23 and you'd find it's 1.5 times 10 to the 23 atoms, which obviously falls short. And then same thing with one gram of water. Yeah, you're going to have three atoms per molecule, but you're only going to have 1 18th of a mole. So if you multiply that by 6 times 10 to the 23rd, and if you were to multiply that by 3, Math actually works out pretty well. 18 times 1 18th, you get 1 times 10 to the 23 atoms, so, which is a lot, but again, fall short of B. So the answer is 